Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Sutish and I am your trainer for this Azure Data Fundamentals DP900 certification course. In this video, we're going to learn about how to manage non-relational data stores in Azure. In this lesson, we will learn about how to upload data to a Cosmos DB database and learn how to query this data. And we will learn about upload and download data in the an Azure storage account as well. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. All right, so before I talk about Cosmos DB APIs, let me give you an understanding about what is Azure Cosmos DB. Azure Cosmos DB is a NoSQL database management system. It's compatible with some existing NoSQL systems including MongoDB and Cassandra. So what are Cosmos DB APIs? You can access the data in a Cosmos DB database through a set of commands and operations, collectively known as APIs or application programming interface. Cosmos DB provides its own native API called SQL API. This API provides a SQL-like query language over documents that enables you to retrieve documents using select statements. So let's understand what is a table API. This interface enables you to use the Azure Table Storage API to store and retrieve documents. The purpose of this interface is to enable you to switch from table storage to Cosmos DB without requiring you to modify your existing applications. All right, so what is a MongoDB API? A MongoDB is another well-known document database with its own programmatic interface. Many organizations use on-premises. You can use the MongoDB API for Cosmos DB to enable a MongoDB application to run unchanged against a Cosmos DB database. And you can migrate the data in the MongoDB database to Cosmos DB running in the cloud as well but continue to run your existing application to access this data. Let's understand Cassandra API. Cassandra is a column family database management system. This is another database management system that many organizations run on-premises. The Cassandra API for Cosmos DB provides a Cassandra-like programmatic interface for Cosmos DB. And the Cassandra API requests are mapped to Cosmos DB document request. As with the MongoDB API, the primary purpose of the Cassandra API is to enable you to quickly migrate Cassandra databases and applications to Cosmos DB. And finally, let's understand Gremlin API. The Gremlin API implements a graph database interface to Cosmos DB. A graph is a collection of data object and directed relationships. Data is still held as a set of documents in Cosmos DB. But the Gremlin API enables you to perform graph queries over the data. Using the Gremlin API, you can walk through the objects and relationship in the graph to discover all manner of complex relationships. You can use the Data Migration Tool or DMA to import data to Azure Cosmos DB from a variety of sources. And you can see all the sources I listed here. Some of it is JSON, MongoDB, CSV files, Amazon DynamoDB, HBase, etc. The data migration tool is available as a download from GitHub or any other repositories. The tool guides you through the process of migrating data into a Cosmos DB database. You are prompted for the source of the data and the destination. The tool can either populate an existing container or create a new one if the specified container doesn't already exist. Please note that you can also use the data migration ex Please note that you can also use the data migration tool to export data from Cosmos DB container to a JSON file, either held locally or in an Azure Blob storage. Although Azure Cosmos DB is described as no SQL database management system, the SQL API enables you to run SQL-like queries against Cosmos DB databases. These queries use a syntax similar to that of an SQL. But there are some differences. This is because the data in a Cosmos DB is structured 
as documents rather than tables. Azure Blob Storage is a suitable repository for holding large binary data such as images, videos, and audio files. In the last video, we talked about how to create a Blob container. So let me take you to the Azure portal and show you what are the specifics of the container. So I'm going to go back to the storage account, select the storage account we created, and I'm going to click on containers. In Azure storage account, you store blobs in containers. A container provides a convenient way of grouping related blobs together, and you can organize blobs in a hierarchy of folders inside a container. Similar to files in file system on disk. When you create a container, this setting supports anonymous read-only access for blobs. However, unauthenticated clients can't list blobs in the container. This means that they can only download a blob if they know its name and location within the container. To upload or download and manipulate any sort of files, you can very well use the Storage Explorer which is available within the portal. You can either download Storage Explorer as a standalone application and you can install on your desktop as well. Let's understand what happens when you delete these files. Deleting a blob can reclaim resources used in the storage container. However, if you have enabled the soft delete option for the storage account, the blob is hidden rather than removed. And you can restore it later. You can enable or disable soft delete in Azure portal and specify the time for which the blob is retained. If the blob isn't restored by the end of the retention period, it will be removed from the storage. So that concludes module three. In the next video, we're gonna quickly do a knowledge check based on the things what we have learned on previous videos. So I will see you in the next one. Till then, take care.